Hey, I'm Mike Baccarello, and today we're going to take a look at a Pat Martino line and use it as a way to expand our vocabulary while also expanding our technique. Let's take a look. So when I was in high school, I was really into shred guitar and heavy metal guitar, and I was really into the idea of being a shredder. And so I practiced a lot of those kind of scale exercises a lot. You know, the, the Paul Gilbert type stuff and the Yngwie groups of four and all those different types of things. And they did a lot to help my technique. I started to notice that the things I practiced were the things I played a lot. And since so I practiced these a lot and I got them up to really high speeds and all that stuff, they tended to come out of my playing quite a bit. And as I shifted into different kinds of music and playing different kinds of things, that wasn't always where I wanted to take things. So I, I had to develop a, a new way to develop technique. And I heard Reza Bassi one time say, your technique should be informed by your vocabulary, not the other way around. And that made a lot of sense to me because you tend to play the things you practice. And if you're practicing patterns, you're going to play patterns. And if you don't want to play patterns, then you should practice things you want to play as part of your technique exercise. So I started working on Charlie Parker solos and all kinds of horn things and stuff that was I was more interested in sounding like. And that's where we're going to take this Pat Martino line. So to start with this Pat Martino line, here it is slowly. <laughs> So we're playing over a G minor 7 chord. And we're starting by going up G, A, B flat, C. And then we're going D, D flat, C. Then we go back up to D. F, A, C. Then we go down a, D, a B flat triad. Down a D minor triad. Down an A minor 7, and then down a D minor 7. So the whole thing's slow, it's like this. So you can alternate pick through this whole thing. Now I use some hammer-ons and pull-offs for the first part of the phrase, but you can alternate pick the whole thing and get through it just fine. So the way I pick it, it's down, up, hammer, up, down, up, hammer, up, and then alternate picking straight through there. Now there's some challenges here. Alternate pick through one note per string like that. You might, I mean, some people might want to sweep something like that. I'm not so good at doing that that way, so I alternate pick everything. That, that's where my strength is, but everyone has their different strengths when it comes to technique. Once you get this line down, you want to, you know, to practice it. Take all the different keys. Move it all through the fretboard. And then you also look at other applications for this line. So we're playing over a minor 7, so we're playing G, G minor 7. Well, I could easily play this over a B flat major 7. As a sharp 11 in there, but it works just great over a B flat major 7. So you could also play this over a C7 sus chord. So practice moving it all around. This line is a really good picking exercise. And it's a good line because it has a lot of colors and it. it has all the arpeggios. It has some chromatics in there. I think I'm going to do a series of videos like this where I'm going to pick different lines from different players and use them as a technique exercise like this. And so let me know if that's something that you guys would be interested in checking out. So thanks for checking out the lesson. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time.